Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, October 18th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, bombshell documents released from the investigation of Hillary Clinton's private email server, where the FBI says the shadow government is in charge. Meanwhile, FBI agents are now claiming that Director James Comey stood in the way and sabotaged the investigation into Hillary's emails. This was also confirmed by WikiLeaks. But the mainstream media marches on and they've become fully weaponized in their mission to take down Donald Trump. But I am 100% convinced, and these media organizations have actually been put out, if you support Trump, we're gonna, your career is done here. All right, and that's how intense it is. Are you talking about... I'm talking about big news. conglomerates. All that, plus much, much more, up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> A page from the FBI's publicly released documents into the investigation of Hillary Clinton's private server revealed that a group literally called the shadow government was overseeing this investigation. I am not kidding. So this was a very group, a powerful group of very high ranking state officials, some referred to as the seventh floor group and the shadow government. They, this group met every single Wednesday. They discussed the FOIA process, congressional records, and everything Clinton related to FOIA congressional inquiries. So some of the people on this list uh, include John Kerry and Jonathan Feiner, who's chief of staff and director of policy planning at the State Department, and Patrick Kennedy, undersecretary of state for management. And we'll talk a little bit about Patrick Kennedy. His name pops up a little bit later in the show, but my goodness. And then, of course, now we can kind of see why John Kerry maybe had a little pull there in Ecuador with getting Julian Assange's Internet cut off. Now, David Knight is on the ground in Vegas with more on this story. David Knight for InfoWars.com here in Las Vegas at UNLV, the site of tomorrow's debate, the final debate before the presidential election. We have a story that just came out at InfoWars.com talking about recently released FBI files that refer to a shadow government. Yeah, the shadow government has come out of the shadows. That's the amazing thing about this. We're talking about personal attacks that are absolutely irrelevant and made up from 30 or 40 years ago against Donald Trump. That's all the media talks about. But they don't talk about their own admission that there's a shadow government. That Hillary Clinton wants to create a hemispheric union with open borders, open trade, a North American union. She doesn't refer to it as that, but she refers to the shadow government in these emails. This is a group also called the Seventh Floor Group that was part of the State Department, including people like John Kerry, who just shut down RT, froze their accounts in the UK, and shut down the internet for Julian Assange. Why? because information is getting out, they're terrified of the public seeing that everything that the so-called conspiracy theorists have been telling you is absolutely true. We could see this, we could infer this from what was going on, but now we have the actual documents, just as we told you for a decade or two decades that uh, the government was spying on you in various ways. We had NSA whistleblowers 10 years before Snowden came out. It was when the Snowden documents hit that people began to pay attention. People still are not really paying attention to what's going on with Hillary Clinton. And it's because she's such a master of deception with this shadow government. And now we see that they even call it that. Will the people wake up? Now, the other people involved in it besides John Kerry is also Patrick Kennedy. He came into the news yesterday as he was offering positions to the FBI if they would play along with uh, classifications on emails. That's the kind of play to play, play to pay that is going on even within the, the government itself. That's the corruption that we've reached. Now, of course, there is a shadow government. We could tell you that there was a shadow government by looking at the fact that the FBI director let Hillary Clinton off, saying that she had committed all these felonies, but don't worry, uh, nobody in their right mind would prosecute her. But don't you try this at home, we'll prosecute you. Now, we said at the time that was absolutely inconsistent, and, but it was consistent with what Comey and Loretta Lynch had been doing with Hillary Clinton for decades, acting as her lawyer, doing her taxes at the accounting firm where they were partners, and HSBC being let off by Loretta Lynch where Comey was on the board of directors, and the fact that the two of them let off Sandy Berger who did what? He went in, confiscated documents out of the National Archive to cover for the Clintons, destroyed those documents, and he was let off by Comey and Lynch without prosecution. 
So join us. We're going to be here for the debate. We're going to be going around Las Vegas talking to people pre-debate. And we're going to have a lot of coverage at Infowars.com. 13 hours of live coverage on tomorrow's debate. For Infowars.com, I'm David Knight. Now, here's a story out of the cancer of corruption that is the Clinton campaign that the mainstream media was actually forced to report on. Now, these are reports that a State Department official is accused of offering quid pro quo in the Clinton email scandal. Uh, an unnamed FBI official alleges that Patrick Kennedy asked the agency to downgrade classified emails in exchange for FBI agents to be placed in more countries. So this is in an interview. This unnamed official says Patrick Kennedy, the Undersecretary of State for Management, tried in late June or early July of last year to get the FBI to change a classified email to unclassified. Uh, they said that they were heavily pressuring him to change this classified email to unclassified. And they'd asked for his assistance in altering the email's classification in exchange for a quid pro quo. And so this would mean that they would allow the FBI to place more agents in countries where they are presently forbidden. This, so this is really interesting here how they'll, you'll, you'll see that they go through the effort to redact some names, protect some people, but yet they're willing to throw Patrick Kennedy under the bus. And of course, he's part of that shadow government there that was overseeing Hillary, the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. And now we are getting reports out of the Daily Caller. They, uh, this was an interview transcript that was given directly to them. They're saying that FBI agents are really upset about the fact that James Comey, how he handled it and decided not to pursue charges. They say he stood in the way of the Clinton email investigation. Uh, they said that this is a textbook case where a grand jury should have been convened but was not. That is appalling. We talk about it in the office and don't know how Comey can keep going. So this agent was also surprised that the Bureau did not bother to search Clinton's house during the investigation. Are you kidding me? I mean, it, it is shocking and surprising. But then, frankly, how can any of us be surprised anymore uh, at all of the amount of corruption that is coming out surrounding Hillary Clinton and her campaign that the media refuses to talk about and cover because it involves them as well? And this whole thing had come down like a house of cards, and that's why they are propping her up. Now, we're also finding out that top Hillary Clinton aides agreed to accept cash from lobbyists who are working on behalf of foreign governments. So this, this is a, another email campaign manager, Robbie Mook, replied to an email chain discussing the campaign's policy toward accepting contributions from foreign registered agents. He said he was OK just taking the money and dealing with any attacks. Clinton campaign spokeswoman Jennifer Palmieri responded, take the money. So this is how they are. They don't really care what it's going to look like. And here they point out Clinton appears to have been unaware of this decision because about a week later, Huma Abedin wrote to Mook saying that Hillary Clinton found out about these exchanges from the papers that the campaign had decided to accept donations subject to the Foreign Agents Registration Act. And you can see... Uh, in this article there, a lot of the different countries where they're accepting money from Iraq, Libya, Egypt, United Arab Emirates, Libya. Um, I mean, just all, all over. the. It's very messy, but they don't care. They want the big checks from wherever they can get them. They, all of these donations brought in about $700,000 to the Clinton campaign. Nothing to see here, folks, though. The mainstream media says there are no bombshell revelations. So will we find out more from WikiLeaks? We don't know because a state actor had Julian Assange's internet connection cut there at the Ecuadorian embassy. Margaret Howell has more. Multiple sources are confirming that former Secretary of State John Kerry, he demanded that the Ecuadorian embassy cut off Julian Assange's internet access. And we know that his internet access was cut off this Saturday at 5 p.m. GMT. Now, we can't confirm whether or not it was related to this demand that John Kerry made of Ecuador, but here's what we know. So John Kerry, and there's an article up on our website written by Paul Joseph Watson. Take a look at it in its entirety. This is what we know. So the Secretary of State John Kerry demanded that Ecuador stop with 
WikiLeaks from publishing documents damaging to Hillary Clinton's campaign. This happening back in September. Now, this bombshell is coming out of the whistleblower organization itself, and we're confirming this through tweets. Now, this breaking information, it's coming from multiple sources. It says that Kerry asked Ecuador to stop Assange from publishing Clinton documents during the FARC peace negotiations. Now, we know that he was in Colombia around September the 26th when this conversation supposedly took place. Here we are in October, and uh, we know that this may have taken some time. It wasn't overnight, but at the behest of Kerry, it looks like they may have have actually cut off his internet because he's publishing uh, these emails related to Clinton. Now, the last email that we have from Assange is this email regarding the Goldman Sachs bankers, her calling Americans who want a closed border policy un-American. She goes on to say other things that aren't very flattering about us. Take a look at this article. It's up on our website. While you're at it, be sure to download our app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Howe reporting for Infowars.com. So this is absolutely an unprecedented time to be in live. A lot of myself and the InfoWars staff are all kind of remarking about how unbelievable it is about how much of an influence we're having on this current election. Half the reason being, probably the majority of the reason being, we're one of the only outlets that dare to give you the truth and speak about all of the scandals surrounding Hillary Clinton, the mainstream media, all of the corruption, all of the collusion. And now we're actually witnessing the, the mainstream media vaporizing right before our very eyes. People are in full awareness that they're not reporting the truth and that they are circling the wagons, protecting their own. They become a fully weaponized outlet and they're not even afraid to hide their bias anymore at this point. Uh, there's an article up at Infowars.com. This one's coming from The Last Refuge and they point out how under normal, non-corrupt circumstances, there are at least 100 stories out right now that should be top headlines, but they're not covering it. And the media, here's why. This is a great, great point. If the media lose this election, all their influence and affluence will vaporize. So they're really in a situation where there's no risk from continuing the current objective. They're protecting their own, protecting themselves. Uh, it goes to point out there was an, an email um, between Fox News, Wall Street Journal, expose uh, around Newsmax. So Newsmax was supposedly supporting immigration and amnesty behind the scenes but they were putting on a conservative ruse out there, you know, for their viewership. And then, of course, we know that there was this whole um, Never Trumper movement that started. And it's not accidental that almost all of the Never Trumpers came directly from inside this conservative media enterprise. A lot of those people who are pushing the Never Trumper movement are these people who are behind the scenes in support of these major progressive agendas, but then they want their readership to believe that they are part of the conservative movement. It's crazy. And that's why they'll support Hillary Clinton versus never Trump, even though Hillary Clinton would be terrible, terrible for conservatives in this country. It doesn't make sense. And then we also know with this WikiLeaks uh, release that there was actually a Politico reporter offering the Clinton camp a chance to edit the story. He actually calls himself a hack. This is Glenn Thrush, and he says, no worries, because I have become a hack, I will send you the whole section that pertains to you. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. Tell me if I effed up anything. So I just wonder if all of these media personalities, I mean, these are really good writers at one point. Do they realize that they've totally thrown their journalism career away with their pride? I mean, he calls himself a hack, which, you know, it, it means a journalist who is now just pumping out stuff, really uh, formulaic, no, no really basic news. Someone just hands him this and says, OK, report that verbatim. So this is what he's doing. And he's given the Clinton camp the chance to edit the story before it even gets published. And here's something else really remarkable. The media hacks are now openly admitting that they are biased coastal elites who are out to stop Trump. Now, we already know this. But because they know that nobody trusts them and believe or believes them, now they're openly saying, OK, well, fine, you're right. We are out to stop Trump. Now, will you believe us that we're out to destroy Trump? So this was during a broadcast on MSNBC Tuesday. Several journalists acknowledge that they're going as far there. The, the case is the corporate bought off establishment media doesn't even pretend to hide that they're one sided, completely biased presentation of events. And so during this broadcast, they went so far as to describe themselves as coastal elites in favor of the rigged political system.
so long as it stops people like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump rising to prominence. And of course, they've got to hide all of their collusion. But that's what I'm saying. The reason why the media, the reason why the FBI, all of these other agencies are protecting Hillary Clinton, it's not about Hillary Clinton. It is about the house of cards that she represents. And if they don't get her in, if Trump is able to, to get in, this entire house of cards is going to come crumbling down. And here's another huge story that you're only going to hear here and other places. A Navy officer is actually warning Alaskans to prepare for war. Right now on Infowars.com, Navy officer tells Alaskans to prepare for war. An unnamed former Navy official has warned the residents of Alaska to prepare for an invasion in the event of war between the United States and Russia. The Daily Star is reporting that a former high-ranking Navy official has evidence that suggests Russia is preparing to invade Alaska if war breaks out between the United States and Russia. Why would Russia be preparing for war? Why would Russia be invading the United States? Well, they've said if Hillary Clinton wins, that means war. We've had John Kerry go on television threatening Russia with cyber attacks. We've had the Democrats blame the Russians on rigged elections with no proof. And yet Americans are still clueless that all of this is going on. So perhaps Russia is sick of our corrupt leaders. Perhaps it's time for Americans to be sick of them too. Russians disguised as highway road crews are allegedly already in Alaska preparing to serve in an asymmetrical role during a full-scale invasion. Another source claimed Russians in civilian clothing have been seen moving into abandoned motels and military bases. Will the mainstream news look into this? Will you hear anything about this from our government? This is a big story. These are monstrous allegations. This should wake up every American citizen as to what is really going on geopolitically speaking. This is Owen Schroyer for Infowars.com. I'm going to break down here in the next few minutes the latest WikiLeaks with new revelations by the thousands coming out each day. But if you look at the full spectrum of the last month, it's clear. The mainstream media is completely directed by a group above Hillary Clinton, a shadow government. And that just came out in the latest emails last night. Clearly, Hillary and the globalists are planning to try to steal the election. Internal polls show Trump way ahead and sell the whole thing as a way to, quote, stabilize our internet grid and other telecommunication systems. So we are witnessing the preparation just 20 days out for the shadow government to steal the election, not from Donald Trump, but from the American people. In Washington, in other hidden sites around the nation, there is a world so secret, insiders call it black. Because no light shines in to reveal what is hidden there. A world of super secret defense and intelligence programs. Black programs. Hundreds of thousands of people work in this shadowy world, pass their lives in black programs. Before he died, I was able to interview several times Anthony Sutton, who had been the chief congressional archivist during major bipartisan committee hearings dealing with the fact that after World War II, with the threat of nuclear war, a continuity of government system, or COG, had been set up in case Washington, the president, the vice president, and much of Congress were killed in a nuclear attack, there would be a new government coming in to continue constitutional law and then to hold new elections. In our examination of the Doomsday Program, we've shown how, in the name of national security, the National Program Office, a classified program with a legitimate mission, overstepped its authority, committed fraud, covered up abuses, avoided oversight, and retaliated against people who challenged its power. By the 1980s, Congress held other hearings dealing with the fact that COG had been used to build a parallel government or a power structure outside the purview of Congress, the American people, and in some cases, the Supreme Court and even the president. FEMA was established in 1979 to basically organize the federalized control outside of Congress or even the states to establish 10 regions that would be controlled by the Continuity of Government Board. 
Now, the experience we've had in the United States is not the first time that COG has been used to attempt to take over a country. If you go back to World War II, towards the end, the Nazis had set up a system in case their high command was taken out where the Nazis could regain control of the country. Patriots fighting against Hitler reversed it in Operation Valkyrie and used the COG to hijack the government. Unfortunately, they did not succeed in their assassination attempt on Hitler, so within 48 hours, the operation failed. But that's an example of good guys using COG to try to fight a tyrant. Here in the United States, multinational interests, it's now been declassified, have used COG systems to circumvent Congress, the people, the courts, the media, you name it. We've seen tens of thousands of WikiLeaks emails of Podesta, Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, and others released in the last few weeks. But this new data dump comes from the FBI. On Monday, they released thousands of pages of emails of high-up Clinton aides, as well as Hillary, organizing a cover-up of what was really happening with her investigation with the emails and the classified information. And over and over again in the emails released by the FBI, so this isn't questioned, Hillary tells her staff, don't worry, COG has taken over. And they say, what COG? Oh, it's the seventh floor or shadow government. It's handling the media, the corporations, the Congress, the courts. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen. So they take a system designed to safeguard the government in a nuclear attack, if the main government's knocked out, to actually set up a parallel government. And this has happened over and over again in third world countries. It's allowed coups in Russia. This system of having a backup government almost always leads to a coup d'etat. But in the West, it's more sophisticated. It's an unspoken coup. And as long as the mainstream media goes along with it and ignores all these incredible revelations, the coup is able to operate in the dark. The FBI released other documents yesterday as well, showing 50-plus pages of memos from senior FBI agents who were visiting with Hillary Clinton's aides and top staff at the State Department saying, listen, we'll give you a lucrative job in the State Department. You can be the ambassador's assistant. You'll make three times as much money. Just don't report that she was passing classified emails. The FBI went and filed internal memos on this, and the FBI agents are in the memos so upset saying, call a grand jury. This is espionage. This is fraud. This is racketeering. They will be indicted right away because they tried to bribe FBI agents in issues of national security. And again, that's the issue with tyranny. If they can become too corrupt to fail, like big banks, then the sky's the limit. If they're able to get away with this, what else won't they get away with? And in other WikiLeaks, separate from the FBI, we have Hillary saying, just do whatever George Soros says, make him happy. It's also come out in the latest WikiLeaks that mainstream media is scared to criticize Hillary because they'll be put on some type of persecution list once she gets elected. Talk about a nation of cowards. Somebody who isn't a coward is Michael Savage, one of the most popular talk shows in the country. Back in 2009, I remember him raving about the fact, I know Hillary put me on this list, the State Department's over it, I can't fly to England, they want to set a precedent to ban anybody's travel they want, and it just came out in the WikiLeaks, and indeed, they told England to ban him from flying, to set the precedent to ban other citizens from travel. I want to ask the so-called left something. I'm a libertarian. I don't consider myself to be a Republican. The Democrats, though, are the main party taking over right now. If Republicans were doing it, I would oppose them. But is there any level of corruption you would not support by Hillary? Is there anything you won't sanction? Because now they want war with Russia. Is there any line? Because, I mean, if Trump did one-tenth of this stuff, I'd be against him. It's clearly manufactured. It's clearly out of control. And the whole world is in grave danger. So I want to ask you in closing... Please comment below if you can do anything other than, you know, make sarcastic comments. Jill Stein, who's a real liberal who I respect, has said that well, you should vote for Trump if you don't vote for her because Hillary wants World War III. I mean, that's what's happening. Hillary is a disconnected megalomaniac hooked into the whole COG. Our government's been hijacked by multinationals. It's all coming out. Our own government has got patriots and they're leaking this info. DC leaks, you name it. This stuff is not coming from Russia. This is coming from patriots inside the system. And Barry Goldwater, back in the 60s, a senior senator, was exposing all of this. 
He famously wrote, the Trilateral Commission is international and is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of commercial and banking interests by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateralist Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and coordinate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. That's from his book, No Apologies. And everything he talked about has come true, and he warned of the COG. So here's the confluence of crises that are happening. Here is the perfect storm, the, the planets aligning for nightmare tyranny. You have dinosaur corporate media that nobody wants to read, nobody wants to follow, because they're so discredited, they're such a joke. I mean, shadows of themselves, 5% of the viewers on average they had 10 years ago, wanting the government to censor new media because they can't compete. You've got big global corporations leveraged out with derivatives they use to take over the planet. All that's come and due. Deutsche Bank's about to go under 50 times or more worse than Lehman Brothers in 2008. You've got all these weird, crazy billionaires on power trips for hegemonic control, pushing war with Russia because it's one of the last sovereign nations standing. And you've got all this weird leftist brainwashing controlling language going on domestically and all these disenfranchised kind of leftist feminist groups that want to play general and who are on power trips and have been bullies their whole lives, who've never been challenged, who are just in some type of crazy death dance to conjure up destruction. I mean, all major analysts, all major generals, left, right, center, you name it. Admit, we're heading towards the abyss. We're going to have live coverage tomorrow, the final showdown, the big debate. It's kicking off at 11 a.m. on my show, right through past midnight, Infowars.com forward slash show. Please join us. Spread the word. While there is somewhat of a free press, if we grow it even bigger, if we promote it, if we completely dwarf the dinosaur media, it may cause them to have some common sense and rationality and back off, but I don't know. I'd get the word out. I'd pray. I'd speak out. I would support ind uh, independent media. And I would set up your own media operations as well. It's very easy to do today, so there's more voices against this insanity. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching this transmission or listening to it and you're taking action, you are the resistance. A lot of what we're witnessing this election cycle is straight out of the Alinsky handbook. Accuse your opponents of what you yourself are guilty of. We're seeing that again and again. Margaret Howell joins me now. Let's talk about the latest little bout of hypocrisy, Obama coming out, and it was actually trending on Twitter for a while, stop whining, with the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> Obama's in the Rose Garden, he's critiquing Trump because Trump has the audacity to say that our elections are rigged, God forbid. What does and that even mean? What does that even mean? Uh, Obama's critique of Trump and this rigged election, this is what he had to say, and, and take a look at this video because it's hilarious. He says, you start whining before the game's over, even, and then he begins to stutter, if, 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 whenever things <laughs> whenever are going... Whenever he's just trying to set, it, set up that shot. Seriously, I can do it. Uh, whenever <laughs> things are going badly for you, you lose. You start blaming somebody else. Then he says, he begins to stutter some more. Then you don't have what it takes to do the job. So he's telling Trump that you don't have what it takes to do the job. You're calling our elections rigged because... Well, we all know that they are rigged, and there's voter rigging right. on a on massive, you know. Vice President Joe Biden actually, I mean, right there, his VP actually came out and said, oh, uh, <laughs> Al Gore won the election. So I'm sorry, what? Uh, seriously, so we can't, uh, we can't have uh, any, any presidential candidate actually calling it for what it is, because we, do, we know that we have a rigged system. But when he, when he tries to spin a lie, you know, the, the truth is really easy to tell. Lies are difficult to remember, and you sometimes stutter, so I can't really blame him again. <laughs> But, so then, like I'm immediately stuttering. after he, and then, so it, it starts trending because everyone's like, ooh, Obama told Trump to stop whining. Mm -hmm. So at the close of this press conference, Obama himself is whining. starts whining because a reporter dare ask him a question, a reporter that wasn't part of the accepted uh, questions that were approved ahead right. of time. And this, you know, they were talking about... Um, the refugee crisis taking place in parts of Europe. So a, a reporter dared question him regarding Central American migrants flooding into the U.S. And Obama's like, well, I appreciate you shouting out a question since I'm sure there are a lot of other colleagues of yours who would want to do the same. <laughs> and then he like left the garden. And so then now we have these, a lot of journalists hitting back at him saying the Department of Whining is uh, still doing it too after eight years when asked a legitimate question in the Rose Garden. Right, so you, you, <laughs> you and I know it is very hard as reporters to get a question and sometimes you literally have to, and if you're overwhelmed, because it's probably frustrated sitting there, you know, the, the president isn't actually addressing anything anybody wants to know or hear about. So 
I can understand the shouting of a question yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then another, so here's another thing that um, came out. So obviously we know there was this big push, uh, the, the gender pay gap, and of course the Clinton campaign was really heavily pushing that because they want to be the party for women and they, they represent women, always constantly calling Donald Trump out for his treatment of women. What were they paid with his department? Well, it turns out the Clinton campaign last year flagged a huge gender pay gap at the Clinton Foundation. So this is according to some newly leaked emails. Uh, apparently the women, three out of the 11 highest paid employees of the foundation are women. And there was a huge pay gap between what the women were being paid versus what the men were being paid. So again, with this hypocrisy, so even they're calling out everyone saying, you know, you've got to pay women equally. They're not even they're doing, not doing it themselves. It. Yeah. <laughs> That's not shocking at all. So we know that Hillary Clinton says one thing out of one side of her mouth and then another out of another side of her mouth. This is how it works, folks. And the fact that she's not paying, of course she doesn't respect women. She doesn't like women. I mean, come on. We, we, Alex had the chef on uh, today. She had some very choice words for people and women. We know how she really feels. It, it, of course it makes total sense that a foundation that she runs wouldn't pay women equally. She hates you. Right. Come on. And it's why so many people are scrambling to, to shut WikiLeaks down because it's, it's so many oh, of them are going to be outed for the true racist, hypocrite, sexist, oh, wow. bigots that they truly are. People are Taco Bowl Tuesdays. Taco Bowl. That's another thing. But while we're on the subject of people wanting to shut WikiLeaks down, just to let you know, uh, John Kerry, it's come out. We've covered this today on InfoWars. Kerry himself is threatening uh, the Ecuadorians, saying, you better shut down Assange's Internet, which we saw that happen on Saturday, roughly 5 p.m. GMT time. And he just he's got to protect Hillary Clinton at all cost. And he did this in Colombia on the 26th that came out through the revelation of, of the emails, frankly, and WikiLeaks. They understood what was happening. But look, if you can't beat them, you got to win at all cost. So let's play dirty and make sure that we just shoot the messenger. Well, and, the and on the hypocrisy of it all, they were really pushing to push this message out to America that we don't need to worry about the NSA because if we've got nothing to hide, then why are we worried about them looking into our emails? Excellent point. Why would we care? Go ahead, read away. It is well documented that in 1953, Nazi mind control experimentation under order by CIA director Alan Dulles and headed by Sidney Gottlieb was integrated into the back rooms of CIA offices, college psychiatric departments, prisons, and mental institutions following World War II. Operation Paperclip morphed into Operation Bluebird, then into Operation Artichoke and Operation Midnight Climax, before finally becoming MK Ultra as it is known today. Back in 1953, the CIA research budget allotted roughly $10 million to be dedicated to human experimentation in the pursuit of mind-controlled super soldiers and spies, involving the techniques generally based upon hypnosis and amnesia, utilizing the effects of heroin, morphine, barbiturates, amphetamines, scopolamine, and other hallucination-causing compounds. In 1977, a FOIA request unearthed 20,000 documents related to MKUltra after Frank Church and the Ford administration began investigating the CIA in 1975. We have quite a lot of detailed information, and we will include any evidence of wrongdoing, as the U.S. Supreme Court later noted, MKUltra was concerned with the research and development of chemical, biological, and radiological materials capable of employment in clandestine operations to control human behavior. The program consisted of some 149 sub-projects, which the agency contracted out to various universities, research foundations, and similar institutions. At least 80 institutions and 185 private Private researchers participated. Because the agency had funded MKUltra indirectly, many of the participating individuals were unaware that they were dealing with the agency. Fast forward to today, MKUltra victims number in the tens of thousands. Hollywood culture celebrates MKUltra as Illuminati symbolism, whether most people realize it or not. And a dark web of sleeper assassins lie dormant due to ongoing MKUltra experimentation and sex slaves. 
Their free will broken under extreme stress from MK Ultra experimentation. Walk amongst the highest seats of power, submitting to their handler's bidding. That is why Kathy O'Brien's story, as inconceivable as it may be to the average American, is important today. I delivered this cocaine to a remote airport in Washita Forest, which I've since identified as Mena Airport. I also delivered a little packet of information and a small quantity of cocaine, a personal stash from J. Bennett Johnston to Bill Clinton. I delivered it to Bill Clinton, and he cut out two lines of the coke, and he did inhale. That certainly wasn't the only time I saw Bill Clinton using cocaine. My sexual experience with Bill Clinton was extremely limited, in spite of the fact that I was a sex slave. It was my experience that Bill Clinton is bisexual, leaning far more towards a homosexual end. All I've ever seen him involved in was the homosexual activity, um, with very limited experience with him myself. Whereas my experience was much more uh, prevalent with Hillary Clinton, because Hillary is also uh, bisexual, leaning more towards a homosexual end, and it was she who accessed my sex programming to fulfill her perversions. Be aware that Hillary is very much for mind control. She has the strongest, one of the strongest agendas for controlling a population of anyone I've ever heard. As detestable as Trump's indiscretions may appear to the average American through the lens of a monopolized and propagandized media that Goebbels would be proud of, Trump's supposed war on women pales in comparison to the claims of rape, drug trafficking, and full-blown racketeering made against the CIA-backed Clinton crime family. John Bound for InfoWars.com. She led the way in Libya. She's trying to start a, an air war with Russia over Syria, which means if Hillary gets elected, we're kind of going to war with Russia, folks. A nuclear armed power while we have 2,000 nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert. here in downtown Austin where we're going to meet up with Dr. Jill Stein, ask her what she thinks about WikiLeaks, the revelation, the media is in cahoots with government officials, what she thinks about Hillary Clinton painting her opponent as in bed with Russian agents. Let's hear what she has to say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, free speech is kind of the, um, what should we say, the victim of this hijacked political system okay. that's been throwing us under the bus and part of what's happened is that media has been enormously consolidated mm -hmm. so it's now a creature of the economic elite mm -hmm. and it takes the real media that is the people's media to actually tell the real story and as you were pointing out we saw from these leaked emails from the DNC that they're working behind closed doors with Hillary's campaign and with the corporate media to grease the skids for same old, same old. So it's just so exciting that people are standing up with the kind of courage that you saw here today to say that we will not be good little boys and girls and do like we're being told by the, by the uh, political pundits and the party operatives who are telling you to keep throwing away your vote on a political system that's throwing you under the bus. We say invest your vote in a true social movement for real change. What do you think about political opponents saying that uh, their uh, political opponents are actually in collusion with Russian agents? Do you think that's absurd? I think that's the kind of thing that they do in Russia, right. is, is try to make uh, political demons uh, uh, you know, and, and foreign agents and spies out of their political opponents. Do you think that, what kind of president do you think Hillary Clinton is going to be? Um, well, we know what kind of Secretary of State she was, that she is of incredible service to Wall Street and uh, to the war profiteers and she led the way in Libya she's trying to start a an air war with Russia over Syria which means if Hillary gets elected we're kind of going to war with Russia folks a nuclear armed power while we have 2,000 nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert so yeah I mean who would who will sleep well with Trump in the White House but 
you shouldn't sleep well with Hillary in the White House either. Fortunately, we live in a democracy. We have more than two deadly choices. We can actually elect a campaign that is not taking money from the war profiteers, from the big banks, or from the fossil fuel giants. Our campaign is the only one that is not corrupted by super PACs, lobbyists, and corporations. We have the real ability to stand up and talk about the crisis that we face, how we can fix it, and the real solutions that the American people are clamoring for. Join us on debate night. Uh, we will be broadcasting live on our Facebook page. You can pick up that link and share it. And that's at Dr. Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein, uh, for our social media. And you can hear real answers to the questions instead of just the mudslinging that we will continue to hear from Donald and Hillary. I think the American people have had quite enough of that. We deserve not only a right to vote, we have a right to know who we can vote for and what are the real issues that the American people should be deciding in this election. So join us on debate night. Well, there you have it. Even Jill Stein trusts Trump more than she does Hillary Clinton. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Owen Schroyer with you. And Project Veritas has released the second video in a series of videos. They are scathing videos exposing the Democratic National Committee and what the Hillary Clinton campaign is willing to do to win this election. These are some of the highlights from video number two. We manipulated the vote. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. I think backwards from how they would prosecute if they could, and then try to build out the method to avoid that. Okay, let's just say, in theory, if, an, if a major investigation came up of major vote fraud that way, how would they prove it and who would they charge? And then it's much harder to prove that these people drove in from out of state. There's no bus involved, so you can't prove conspiracy. The canvassers don't have to know why they're, they just need to be no. told to do it. Yeah. In fact, you don't want them to. Right. Least restrictive donation caps and, and cut campaign finance laws and investigation and any investigative arms and any other. Like, they have weakened it so bad in these three states. You could f your mother in front of the governor and not go to jail. If you had enough money to go like this. Uh -huh. For a hot seat for the next president, is, you know, if it, if it Donald Trump, that it even makes more sense. The issue would be even more credible and much more opportunity for us to jump into this. Right. If the Secretary Clinton and the 49 e laws are losing and we have much more opportunity for people to vote and we have immigration reform, it's not going to be as significant, right? We have to do a better job of making our people do what they're supposed to do. Not, not asking them, yeah. making them, not yeah. expecting them and taking them for granted, but beating the sh** out of them and making them like, like, like voters. Yeah. The question is whether when you get caught by a reporter, does that matter? Because does it turn into an investigation or not? In this case, in this state, we're these videos of all the things we have seen in this election cycle have to be the most damning and most damaging to any candidate. Now, they've gotten millions of views on their videos. Let's see how the public responds in the polls. But we're already seeing a response from the Democratic Party. This is coming from the Sean Hannity Show, which is one of the few television network shows that actually talked about this. Shocking. Heads roll, Democratic operative fired after O'Keefe video. Scott Vogel, the National Field Director of Americans United for Change, who can be seen in the video bragging about paying homeless and mentally ill individuals to cause disruptions at political events, has been fired. Personally, I'm shocked that he didn't get a promotion. I'm shocked. I would be shocked if he didn't end up like Debbie, Debbie Wasserman Soltz, who gets a job with the Clinton campaign after it's discovered how corrupt 
she is at trying to rig elections. Brad Woodhouse, the president of America's United for Change, said Americans United for Change has always operated according to the highest ethical standards. Ha! I guess uh, Brad Woodhouse is just a total liar. Now, on InfoWars, O'Keefe, TV network spiked story over fear of retribution from Hillary Clinton. This should honestly strike fear into every journalist and every American citizen. Project Veritas, Veritas founder James O'Keefe says that the television stations across America canceled appearances he was set to make on their networks over fears of retribution from a future Hillary Clinton administration. Why would you cancel this? This is the most powerful investigative reporting, certainly in probably decades. I don't know if you want to go in American history, but recently, and especially in the last four, eight, ten years, you're talking about some of the most powerful investigative reports ever. James O'Keefe and Project Veritas deserve awards, and you've got TV networks canceling these interviews. Why would they do that? Now, Project Veritas and O'Keefe claim they know why. I'm quoting James O'Keefe. Project Veritas action had television exclusive lined up around the country. Those television stations spiked the story at the last minute because they were so powerful. Our sources tell us the reason they did so was fear of retaliation and retribution from a future Clinton administration truth is dangerous especially when it challenges those in power well that would explain why Hillary Clinton keeps attacking Alex Jones and Infowars by name but it goes on Bob Kramer has now been uh, he's stepped down and then he still talks about how proud of the work he is even though he's been caught using dirty tactics he still talks about how proud he is and then he acts like these are outrageous claims and hypothetical conversations when we actually caught him on tape what an unbelievable liar Brad Kramer is or excuse me Bob Kramer Obama to Trump stop whining about the election he goes on to talk about how whining about rigged elections is absurd well well, we've caught the Democratic Party rigging elections, and now we've caught the Democratic Party. DNC bus dumps raw sewage. That's right. They dumped their waste on the streets, just like the Democrats have been doing in America for years. Thanks for joining us tonight on the Nightly News. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. 13 hours of live coverage of the presidential debate.